so please turn with me to Colossians um, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. So perfectly, I enjoyed uh, the worship uh, this uh, noon time. Thank you, Koya, for that wonderful song. Uh, so that leads to uh, today's uh, topic. And we were singing about uh, the goodness, greatness, and sovereignty of our God. And this morning, the passage also uh, tells us about the sovereignty and the goodness of um, our Savior. So when we look at uh, uh, the book of Colossians, the epistles to Colossians, we know that uh, Apostle Paul uh, wrote this letter to the church in Colossae, a city in Asia Minor, approximately in AD 60. Paul wrote uh, this epistle during his uh, Roman imprisonment. And history says Paul never had uh, visited Colossae. The church had been founded by Epaphras and other believers from Paul's missionary journey. Paul especially wrote this letter to combat uh, false teachings that had uh, infiltrated uh, the Colossian church. Uh, the main issue in Colossian church was syncretism. Probably uh, the word syncretism means uh, combining ideas from other philosophies and religions. So Colossian church faced this great uh, uh, damage due to these particular teachings. Uh, Greek philosophy and other religious teachings they combined together and this infiltrated uh, the church in Colossae. Paganism or strains from uh, Greek thought uh, with Christian truth, all these were combined together and put before Colossian believers. And Paul knew that this is dangerous and false teaching uh, is dangerous to the church of uh, Christ. So he wanted to uh, redeem the Colossian church from false teaching. At the same time, he wanted to educate them uh, with Christian gospel and uh, doctrines. So to combat uh, the error, Paul emphasized here uh, the, the deity of Christ. And he emphasized the person and work of Christ. He emphasized the personality and uh, uh, the great power of Christ. And he wants to uh, emphasize that Christ is divine. At the same time, Christ is human. So he wants to emphasize the divinity and humanity of Christ. And he gives this uh, epistle to uh, Colossians. So he wants to emphasize the sacrificial death uh, um, as a man on the cross. And we just sang, death can hold you. The grave can uh, hold you. Only through Christ, one can have eternal life. So the key verse of uh, the book of Galatians is chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. So these verses is, is known to be the key verses of the um, uh, book of Colossians. As we read through chapter 1 verses 1 to 12 and he greets the Colossian believers and he offers a thanksgiving prayer for spiritual wisdom and strength for uh, uh, these brethren. And when we read through chapter 1 verse 13 to 23, uh, Paul is discussing about the person and work of Christ. So our verse just tells us that, so then just are you see, are, as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. So, we want to ask a question at this point. Who is this man? Who is Jesus? And Paul, first of all, emphasized the greatness and goodness of Jesus in the first chapter. So, brief, briefly, we look at the first chapter for, uh, for a moment. Look at chapter 1, verse 15. And Paul is talking about Jesus Christ as the image of invisible God. Jesus is the image of invisible God. That means Jesus is the exact representation of God. He is the exact image of God. And these days we are very familiar with the image. And we can't uh, differentiate between the original and the image. And technology has come to such an advanced level. In early stage in Kerala, if you go for a xeroscopy, it's full of full black. 
So we, we can't read what it is. But now that state is gone. It is exactly the same. The imprint is exactly original. So here Paul says, probably 2022 years <coughs> back, Paul is telling, see, he is the exact representation of Christ. Jesus is the exact representation of God. He is the exact image of God. He reveals God. Jesus is the uh, image of uh, invisible God. And then he says he is the firstborn of all creation. He has all the authority. He came from heaven. He is completely holy. As we read through John chapter 1 verse 18 and John chapter 14 verse 9, all these verses tells us or reminds us that God or Jesus reveals God. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Jesus revealed the Father. So this is what exactly Paul wants to communicate to the Colossian believers. He is the image of invisible God. And then in verse 16 of Colossians chapter uh, uh, 1, Paul tells us that he is the creator. He is the creator God. Look at those words. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Christ created everything. As we read the same in John chapter 1, we see that God created everything through Jesus. He is behind all the creation. As we read through Genesis, we see that, come, let us make man in our own image. That three, plurality talks about the oneness of God. Let us make man in our own image. So Paul is telling, if Colossian believers, that he is the creator. In him, all things were created, visible and invisible. All the thrones, powers, rulers, and authorities of both the spiritual and physical world were created by Christ himself. And in verse 17 says, he sustains everything. He upholds everything. He protects everything. And he provides for everything. He, not only the creator, he sustains. He provides, he protects, and he keeps them going. And thirdly, Paul here says that he is the head of the body of the church. In verse 18, in verse 18, it uh, reminds us that and he is the head of the body of the church. He is our head. He is the, he is the father. He is the beginning and firstborn from among the dead. Now, he is the head of the church. At the same time, he rose from the dead. He alone and his tomb is still empty. His tomb is still empty and he rose from the dead. He broke and sin and the grave. So he is sovereign and supreme. He is not like the gods of Greek mythologies. And he is supreme and sovereign. He defeated death. As we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20. And also 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14. So Jesus is God. This is the whole thesis of Paul uh, as he wrote uh, Colossian um, a letter. And uh, thirdly, he tells us that he died for us, reconciled us to God. Look at verse 22 of chapter 1. And there it says, But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight. So he died the deadly death and he was crucified for us just to reconcile us to the Father. Now, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, we see when we were powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. We were powerless. He died for us. And secondly, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, we see 
when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were powerless, when we were sinners, and in 5.10 it says, while we were God's enemies, he died for us. So when we put all these thing, things uh, together, we see that Christ died for us, for me and you. When we were enemies, when we were powerless, when we were sinners, when we were far away from God and the fellowship, He died for us. He reconciled us to the Father. So Apostle Paul says, He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in His sight. He faced this death so that we will be reconciled to God at the same time we will be holy just to give a new nature, a new cloth of holiness. So this is what Jesus, so he, in a very emphatic way, he emphasized the greatness, the goodness, and the power of Jesus Christ. And with that foundation, he is moving to chapter 2. And when he comes to verse uh, 6, he says, So, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. So we are in a new beginning. We had the, just started 2023, the first week, the first Friday. We know what happened for the last couple of years. We had gone through a pandemic. We faced difficult uh, uh, times. And we were sitting with mask, sanitizer, and with social distance. That time has gone. We are in a new phase, a new beginning, a new year, a first week of 2023. So if God allows, we have a long way to go. As we are heading towards our journey, this is what Paul encouraged us to do. Be rooted in Him. He died for us. He delivered us. He gave us a new status. He gave us a new cloth. So be rooted in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be rooted in Him. And the Shalom very beautifully, I think, um, portrayed a picture of a tree. Uh, be rooted in Him. Just like a tree. Be rooted in Him. And we know a healthy tree is rooted so deep in underground. From the underground, the healthy tree gets nutrients and moisture. If there is no nutrients and moisture, the tree will die. The tree will dry up and it will go on. But Paul is comparing our spiritual life is just like a tree, a, a healthy tree. Rooted and built up in Him. What does it mean? We know that the root gives stability. And the root always acquires nutrients and moisture from the ground. Now what we see above the ground is only a fraction of the tree. Everything is underground, covered. And deeply rooted. And as we know, the most important part of the tree is underground. Searching for nutrients and fetching nutrients, giving nutrients to the tree. Look at Psalm 1, verse 3. We all are familiar with Psalm 1, verse 3. That person is a light, that person is like a tree. Planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. So there also, the psalmist is comparing a spiritual person with a healthy tree. A tree planted by streams of water. So this new time, this is what the Spirit of God encourages, challenges to lead a life healthy for the glory of God. For that you need God's guidance, 
God's wisdom deeply rooted in him. How it will be? We need to read God's word. Without reading, we cannot be go into the depth. Not only reading, but also we need to meditate. Read, meditate and obey God's word. Through this process only we can deeply rooted in Christ Jesus. I don't know what kind of uh, plan you are having in reading the scripture. What kind of plan? I don't know. You can say to yourself, how we are studying the Bible? Reading and studying and obeying the Bible is very essential. So when we study God's word, we will be strong. We will be able to face eventualities or challenges in life. Storms of life. If the root is not strong, we know what will happen to a, a tree. When storms come, it will fall, it will, it will die off, it will fall. Similarly, our spirituality, if you are not strong, we cannot face the temptations of Satan. In order to face temptations, we need to be strong, spiritually strong. How Jesus overcome the temptation? He overcome the temptation by the word. At the Torah, he used God's word, the sword, God's word, to overcome temptations. So this note, I challenge you to have a proper plan of reading and studying the scripture so that you will be strong spiritually. When you face challenges and difficulties, you will face it boldly with spiritual strength, the strength from above, God's grace and strength. I don't know how many of you heard about Hannah Ali Simon. Hannah Ali Simon. We know Hannah and Sarah and so many. Like. Hannah Ali Simon is a teenager or a 17 year old girl. She was in limelight for the last uh, uh, couple of months in India. Probably that's why you are not uh, familiar with that name. Hannah Ali Simon, she wrote her uh, CBAC board examination, 10th examination, 12th board examination. And when the result came, uh, she scored 497 marks out of 500. Bishop, what's so funny about it? Eh? Our children are, are also scoring. Sent them 500, 500. I tell you, my friends, Hannah Ali Simon is a born blind girl. Born blind. This blind girl scored 497 marks out of 500. She is from Ernagulam. And her parents, ordinary people. Her father is an office worker and her mother is a school teacher. And she got uh, two siblings, younger ones. This girl born blind. You can imagine a child who is blind in our family. But God helped Hannah Ali Simon. She grew up with facing challenges. She gone to ordinary schools, normal schools. And she faced challenges from her uh, classmates, schoolmates. The bulgy eyes. And she got all sorts of names in school. People mocked at her. And she was so desperate. But in this desperation, her parents taught her a lesson to dwell on God and his word. So she started reading Bible. She got uh, nourishment from the biblical passages. She got spiritual strength from the passage. And she started to use her talents. She became a beautiful singer, a composer. She plays music, uh, musical instruments. A multi-faceted, talented girl. And with that, 
she wrote her 12th board examination and she scored 497 marks. So the leading India Today channel, English channel in India, interviewed her. Sitting at a newsroom in Delhi, she gave this um, interview. And the anchor asked her, Hannah, what is the reason for uh, this success? A blind girl, highly talented, scored 497 marks with this difficult state of life. She has given all credit to her master, savior, Jesus Christ. And she said, because of Jesus, I'm able to do this. And Jesus helped me. And Jesus is the source of power that gave me this success. The whole credit goes to Jesus. And with the support of my parents and siblings, I was able to score this much. And you can uh, verify this looking at YouTube. Go to YouTube and write Hannah Ali Simon. You get whole profile. Her singing, her talents, everything is given there. And her, her story not only really stopped with her success in CBSE, a university in states, after hearing all of this story, a university in states, a leading university in states, offered her admission for her undergraduate studies, for her graduate studies. She took that admission. And probably by this time, she is in states continuing her uh, education with full scholarship. Why I am sharing this story? I am sharing this story so that uh, some of you may be challenged by her life achievement. It's possible for us when we walk with Jesus. When we walk with Jesus, Sky is the limit for us to grow. There is no need for uh, any influence or any recommendation. When you walk with Jesus, when you are deeply rooted in Him, obey Him, meditate His word, God is able. God is able. So this is what Paul wants to communicate to Colossian believers. Be rooted in Him so that you will be strong and you will be fruitful. Not only strong, you will be fruitful. And we know the fruit of the Spirit as we read through in um, Galatians chapter 5 verse uh, 22. We will be fruitful. Our life will be fruitful. And God will be honored and glorified through our life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and we will be bestowed with the fruit of the spirit when we say yes to the lord and follow him unconditionally and this is what john tells us in john chapter 15 abide in me abide in me in 15 of 4 and 5 remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the wine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. You want to be successful? You want to be fruitful? You want to climb up the ladder of success in your life? Turn to Jesus. Depend on Him. Hold on His hand. And walk with Him. Be Rooted in Him. Not only reading, but also spend time with Him. Read His Word. Obey His Word. Spend time in uh, prayer. Then we will be strong spiritually and God will bless us. And thirdly, Paul uh, here it says, be strengthened in faith. Paul talked about the, the, the 
uh, the power, person and work of Jesus Christ. Paul talked about uh, be rooted in Christ. And then he says, be strengthened in faith. When storms come, how we display faith? When we ask Abraham, our forefather, the father of nations, father of faith, he displayed faith even in the adverse circumstances. In the adverse circumstances, he was able to display his faith. So, my dear friends, we began our journey with Christ in faith. We must follow Christ every time in faith. Just as a plant draw nourishment from the ground, we must draw our life-giving strength from Christ. And if there is no faith, we cannot please God. As we read through Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, we cannot please God. So faith is essential. Faith is very much essential for our life. Moving from there, finally Paul tells them, All flow with thankfulness. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and all flow with thankfulness. We must be giving thanks to our God Almighty. When everything is fine, it's easy for us to give thanks. Am I right? Everything is fine and everything is going on well. It's easy for us to give thanks. When an adversity comes, when we face storms in our lives, when we face challenges, is it possible for us to give thanks? We always sing, a song, sing that song, you know, give thanks with a grateful heart. Thankfulness is very much essential in our everyday walk with the Lord. We must be thankful to God for the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, the cloth that we use, and the water that we utilize. It's God's provision. Food Shelter and clothing is God's provision. We must, be th we must be thankful to God for this. Probably during um, Corona time, people were searching for oxygen cylinders. I don't know uh, about uh, the situation here. Hospitals were run out of uh, oxygen cylinders. And many were suffocating and uh, died without getting oxygen. And that was very, it, it was a big hue and cry in India, in several hospitals. They were not, they were run out of uh, oxygen cylinders. But think about the oxygen that we breathe 24 into 7 without paying any fills, am I right? Without paying any fills, 24 into 7. Ever thought about it? Ever thought about it? Think about people go to bed without having a morsel of bread. Think about children. In India, I tell you, likes and likes of children go to bed without having a full meal a day. When we, when we enjoy all these blessings, have we ever thought about God's goodness? We always look at what we do not have. What we do not have. And we always look at others, what do they have? 
That's our comparison. But we never look at ourselves. The way in which God blessed us immensely. Immensely. So think about the goodness of the Lord. Our flow with thanksgiving. Lead a life of thankfulness. I'll be close within a few minutes. What are the advantages if we are rooted in Christ? What are, what are the advantages? Already I mentioned a um, few things. First of all, when we are rooted in Christ, we'll be able to face challenges in our lives. If we are not rooted, I think when tsunami comes, we'll be washed away. I mean tsunami means storms in life. Storms in life. We'll not be bold enough like Hannah Hali Simon. Recently I visited um, Nelambur, the northern part of Kerala. I visited a, a home. I come across a person who is in bed for the last 30 years. 30 years he is lying in bed. I asked about the story. And um, the people, now he, he can speak. The, after the first month, the 30 days of his marriage, remember, 30 years ago, 30 days before his marriage, his wife went to the open well and she was trying to draw water from the open well. You know, some of you know the, the big wells in Kerala with no proper uh, uh, ring and all. It was just a wooden plank across uh, the well. And she was trying to draw water. It's a deep well. And she noticed something there. And probably it was a frog. I don't know. Dead frog. I don't know. What was it? But she noticed something. And she called her husband. And with this surprise, he also stood on that wooden plank. All on a sudden, that broke. Both of them fell in that deep, deep well. And his wife, the newly wedded wife, died instantly. And he was survived, survived with multiple injuries. And 30 years before, he didn't get uh, good medical attention. The whole spine was completely damaged. And he became paralyzed. Somehow the wound was able to dry. But he's totally paralyzed. 30 years he's dead. But I, when I looked at his face, his face is just like bright sky, all flowing with thankfulness. He laughs. He smiles. He tells us about the goodness of Jesus Christ. A person faced storms in life for the last 30 years. Lying completely in bed. Lost everything. And his brother, his family is looking after him. No financial support from anybody. And this brother is an average worker, daily worker. He is supporting him. But his face shines like the sun. All flowing with thankfulness. This is what the power of spirituality. If there is no power of spirituality, you can't smile, you can't laugh with this shining glory. So Apostle Paul tells us that 
all flow with thankfulness. We'll be able to face challenges. And secondly, we'll be fruitful in our spiritual journey. We'll be fruitful. As we read in John chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. We'll be fruitful. If we are not rooted in Christ, then our life will be in danger and destruction. As we read in John chapter 15, uh, we just mentioned that verse. John chapter 15, uh, we see that verse 1 and 2, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be, it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If you are not bearing fruit, if you are not, bear, if you're not abiding in Christ, verse 6, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If we are not rooted and remain in Christ, if we are not fruitful, there will be judgment, there will be punishment. And no one can help us and deliver us from the hands of the Almighty God. So my young friends, you have a long way to go. Remain in Christ so that you will be fruitful and uh, God will be honored through your life. As a response to this scripture portion, let us rededicate our lives in God's hand. Let's renew our commitment with our God so that we will walk with Him faithfully throughout our life. Jesus is the Lord, is the Savior, is the Creator, is the Redeemer. And Paul is asking Colossian believers to be rooted in Him. Strengthened in faith and overflow with thankfulness. May the Almighty bless you abundantly. May God give us His grace and strength and His Spirit may empower us so that we will be continuously work with Him and glorify His name. God bless you. Thank you for giving me this particular time. Wish you God's blessings. Mm -hmm.